Greetings once again, Supersonic Warriors. Dudes, dudes, then back again with more Sonic Prime. Previously, Sonic and his newfound friends, Rebel Rouge, Renegade Nux, the mechanically tailed and mechanically gifted Nine, and the newly acquired Rusty Rose, hacked by Nine, fight their way through the base of operations for the Chaos Council, who do their damnedest to try and stop all of them from making their way to the power source for the entirety of New York City. And after massive battles and brawls, battling against Dr. Dunnett and Dr. Baby, oh wait, no, it was Dr. Deep and Dr. Babble, Sonic finally discovers that the power source is not the... Paradox Prism as a whole, but a shard of it. I didn't realize before, but apparently, Sonic had no real recollection of everything that had happened that sent him to this new alternate universe, simply believing that Eggman had managed to gain a hold of the Paradox Prism and reshaped his world, not realizing that it is an alternate world altogether. But after finding the shard, Sonic realizes that what has happened may very well be his fault. But the prism, the shard, then sucks Sonic in all of a sudden. Where? Well, join me as I find out, won't you? Oh, yellow flickies. Oh, a uh, jungle world. Cool. Oh, okay, those are some cool looks. I don't know how to feel about Knuckles' hat. Wow, big wielding a slingshot. That's interesting. What are on Knuckles' hands? Are we actually seeing Rouge's fingers? Man, I'm not used to seeing alternate versions of Rouge. Oh, is that a Q-berry? What the heck? Oh, what the heck was that? Is it kind of like the Wicked Wild? Dinos, dun dun dun, all over. Dun dun dun, it's a jungle. Dun dun dun, the Wicked Wild, yo! Oh, did the color of his shoes and gloves change? Oh, that's cool. Does it change depending on the worlds that he goes to? Cool. Jungle level. <laughs> City park. You're in a whole nother world, buddy. Yeah, styling. It's kind of like uh, alternate skins, essentially. That's kind of cool. Uh, you fell from the sky. Oh, oof, oh, oh. That was a pretty hard hit. Does Knuckles have sharp teeth? Oh, she took the berry. <laughs> the trees are tough. You to us, man. <laughs> I love this version of Knuckles. He's so paranoid. Oh, oh no. The berry. Oh, is it gonna go over the edge? Oh, oh. Oh, that's depressing. They're gonna kill him. Oh, yep, yeah. Sonic, I'm gonna need you to figure out alternate dimensions as fast as possible, buddy. Whoa, claw extensions. What? Yo, that's cool. Ooh, oh, yeah, ooh. Oh yeah, that was all in the, like, the course of a day. Jeez, where do they keep getting those spears from? Ooh, jeez. I actually kind of love this action. <sighs> What's a robot? I love the way that Nux talks. God, this is... This action scene is still going, wow. Oh, man. <laughs> I love the creativity. There it is. Finally put it together. Yeah, you're gonna have to explain again. Okay, wow. So in one universe you had a world where machines had pretty much taken over nature, but in this world nature has taken over? Huh, wild. Uh-oh. What the hell is that? Oh, hey, Tails! Ah, uh, they want to use him as a decoy. Oh, oh no! He's a savage wild child! <laughs> oh, oh he is... He's just savage. Oh, that's not good. Mangy. Prim. Hangry. Gnarly. Prim. Hangry. Gnarly. Mangy. Huh. I, I don't know how well I like those names. Uh-oh. Well, Rouge in any dimension knows an angle when she can take it. Uh, okay. Of course she's the leader here. Whereas in the other universe, Knuckles was the leader because, I mean, resistance, going off of Sonic Forces rules or whatever. How does Knuckles keep becoming the leader of resistances? But in this universe where it's all about scavenging and doing what you have to to survive, naturally an alternate version of Rouge would take over. Fascinating. But is it... Just them? Oh, their villain. Huh. <laughs> I love the way that Mangy, I guess, is walking. Like, <laughs> this actually kind of makes me think of um, Knothole in the Archie comics. It was kind of built like the Ewok village up in the trees and stuff. The boss cage maze. Man, I've never seen Big so mad. <laughs> this is sad.
This is a sad state of existence. This is depressing. He found the berry. Aw, yeah. <laughs> Even if she wasn't playing him, I think Sonic would help out of principle. This is depressing. <laughs> like, wow. It's me. It's me. I can handle it. <laughs> oh, this is so sad. It's like excited about two berries oh no this poor creature oh oh this is depressing is this monster a version of eggman whoa it is green hill zone weird stealthing about man a world where tails isn't a genius weird <laughs> well knuckles is still strong be very very quiet would try not to be hunted like Move over, I got it. It's another berry. <laughs> this Knuckles is so paranoid. Oh, Froggy! <sighs> okay, what is this monster? Uh, seriously, what is that thing? Did it go after them instead of Sonic? Oh, thorns. Oh, does he have a plan? It sounds like a bird. Oh, it got roof. Nice. Alright, uh, yeah. It is very fast. Yeah, all this foliage is gonna make it a little hard to run. Seriously, what is this thing? I gotta admit, the mystery has me intrigued, but the more you don't show it, the more I have to wonder what it is. Right. Other senses. Oh. Oh. He's thinking. Oh. Oh. Uh. Bird. It is a giant flicky. Oh. Yeah. Not as terrifying when you actually get a good look at it. And Sonic's fast enough to deal with this. Ah, uh, it's baiting it. Nice. Wait, that's not the monster? Hey. Then what's the monster? Oh. What the heck? Oh, I love the sound. <laughs> Spikes. Amy? <laughs> Whack a hedgehog. Oh boy. Oh wow. A universe where the most terrifying thing is Amy Rose. Oof. Jeez. Huh. That look. It's kind of old school Amy with the hairs coming out. Huh. I gotta tell you, I love the look. No, no, they got it right. Oh, your agility's the only thing that's gonna help here. Yeah. This is what makes it hard. Oh, damn. Yeah, there's a lot of really aggressive versions of Amy. Oh, he's going back in. Oh, cool. It's green now when he does the figure eight. Ah, oh, you can't smash her, but she can smash you. Oh, thorn rose. Huh, a little on the nose, but I like it. Ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Sonic, friend to nature. Oh, yeah, what did happen here? Okay. Ah, take the hammer and run. Oh. To she the great green peace offering. A please do not bash my face in offering. Huh. This Amy seems a little bit taller too. Man. Yeah. And he has a good point. Why aren't you willing to negotiate or something with him? Betrayal, really? <sighs> I don't get it. Like, cutting down dying trees, they don't seem like they're capable of something like that. A great green. A palm tree. Again? That was made special in the previous universe, too. What is it about the palm tree? Hmm. Hey, hedgehog. Burrowing animal. Oh, he's gonna handle it with care? Huh. Oh, okay. I, uh, wasn't expecting that. Huh. Dang. I'm, I'm gonna admit, I wouldn't have saw it coming either. I'm like... Oh, this seems a little too easy. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, powering up her hammer? To have greater control over the green. Oh, snap. Oh, unwelcome to the jungle is right. Jeez. I gotta tell you, not the direction I thought this was going in. I was expecting, like, some alternate version of Eggman to be a giant monster or something, but jeez. And why? Huh. It's interesting that so many alternate versions of Amy end up being enemies? Oh, <laughs> it's funny because it's kind of like showing Sonic how much he should appreciate that Amy tends to be on his side more often than not. It is interesting. It is very interesting. And also, it's kind of like with Sonic the comic. Versions of Amy that aren't like overly beholden to Sonic tend to be a lot more aggressive and very deadly. Like, Amy Rose from Sonic the Comic? Like, she's a badass. And I'm not saying our our usual Amy isn't a badass in and of herself. Like, mean, shoot, go off of Sonic X-based Amy and she's a freaking hellion. And I'm interested to see where this goes, though. But I'm interested in the fact that, okay, so if he doesn't touch it, he's fine, but now with Thorn Rose having it 
essentially attached to her hammer. I mean, how does he avoid touching it now? Huh. And what happens if he goes through this one too? I mean, does he just keep finding the shards and, you know, popping out all over the place? And it's interesting that he doesn't end up where the shards are, or even in an alternate location of where he was before he made the jump. Because he was in the mountain in his original world, then he popped out on the streets of New York, had to travel to essentially what was the mountain, but was the base of the Chaos Council, make it to the depths there, then he ends up up top in, um the boss case made maze makes his way down to where that palm tree is what is it about the palm tree that's so significant it feels like that's what they're leading us to something about the palm tree why is it always the palm tree that has so much significance and will we ever go back to new york city i mean i can't imagine we just leave things in the state they were previously and is amy really the ultimate enemy here hmm. no there's something else something that's being a doing the destroying and Amy has pinned it all on the scavengers, as she puts it. Interesting. Very interesting. Let me know your thoughts on this episode in the comments section below and any of the ideas that I've had. I know that you probably watched all the episodes, but even still, I love having thoughts on specific episodes. But also remember to like, subscribe, bell, all that good YouTube stuff. And until next time, I've been Deuce Disden, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye